Right now, our first of two SEC Spring Football Focus. Time to recap how spring practice went for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We're joined by Tom Murphy from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, who's had some coaching issues to uh, or subjects to uh, to discuss and follow and track and cover as well. Tom Vincent, Mike Griffith. Good morning. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing quite well. How are you guys? You've been through you've been through a couple two tree of these uh, these coaching change deals, right? But maybe not some, anything like went down at Arkansas. Huh? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I covered the uh, Mike Price situation at Alabama, and uh, I don't know. This I'll have my ninth coaching search coming up in the winter. <laughs> uh, so just give me a quick thought on on John L. Smith being named the coach, uh, at least for the time being. Right. Well, truly, Jeff Long was in a bind. Uh, rough, rough situation in mid-April or early April after he fired Petrino. Um, you go out and poach some big time college coach and then you're going to be reviled and he didn't have a whole lot of options and, and quite frankly there was a lot of pressure within from the players the coaches here and just supporters of the team who wanted to keep things together the best they could so what's the solution yeah you hire john l smith who was on staff the last three years uh well respected by the team brings a, a much welcome dose of humor a different perspective to the head coaching slot and and ostensibly everyone is happy going into 2012 and perhaps you can make the most out of your team that you know that you wanted out of this season tom i don't understand why some feel that arkansas should apologize for hiring this guy i I know that some of the national reaction was looking down their nose but this is an accomplished coach who did some really good things in in louisville if i'm not mistaken and, and and certainly it Michigan State. I know there's a YouTube with him getting down on a coach, but you know what? That's called accountability. I I don't understand the negative backlash. This looks like a fabulous hire. Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, uh, uh, his last three seasons as a head coach were losing seasons. Difficult situation, Michigan State. Right. He took over a rebuilding situation. In fact, everything he's taken over, he's has been rebuilding. And he set the uh, table. And, and then the second thing is, yeah. you plucked uh, away a guy from his alma mater who uh, had not coached a game there yet. So, uh, as Jeff Long pointed out yesterday on the second part, um, John L. Smith came to them, so it wasn't like they went looking for him. And uh, John L., you know, squared that away the best he could, he thought, with the Weber State people. You can still criticize him for it, but that's the way things go. Yeah. He's going to make more in one year than he would in the, the four years he would would have been under contract at Weber, plus another about $300,000. So, and as he put it yesterday, and this is something I think the average fan might have trouble relating to, in his profession, he's as close as you can come to coaching a team that can win a conference championship and contend for a title, and that means something to him, and and that's another reason why he came back. Well, and Tom, not not necessarily because of the record, but his style is similar to what the personnel Arkansas has. That's why I think this is a fabulous hire, because you found somebody – who fits your personnel? It's not, you know, let's let's tear it up and start all over, and let's learn our personnel, and let's make this fit to what I want. I, this appears to be about as seamless a situation as Arkansas could have hoped. Well, that, that's that's a good perspective, Mike, and, and 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 I agree. I think Jeff Long did about as well as he could have under the, the circumstances. The players are happy. Um, the assistant coaches, some of them who might have thought they could have been elevated are going to deal with it. They understand how important this year for, is for them in their careers and, and moving on from here. So I think you're going to get the best of Paul Petrino on offense. I think John L. comes in and, and at least gives more of a credence to what they're doing on defense. It's just the defense seemed to be such a, a stepchild here the last three years. I think there will be a little bit more importance placed on it. I think Paul Haynes will help there. He coached with John L. at Louisville and Michigan State. Um, when you add it up for what they're – what they need right now, I don't believe they could have done much better. Joined by Tom Murphy from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Arkansas had its spring game this past weekend. And, Tom, just give me your thoughts on Tyler Wilson in spring, not only in that spring game but throughout spring. What kind of uh, camp he had? He did great. He, uh, he completed, all, all, I think it was somewhere 70% or so of his passes. Now, most of that, the first three scrimmages was against the first-team defense exclusively. Um, and then in the spring game, you know, they, they did ones against twos, and, and he had another big game, 31 of 41, uh, 400 and 
something yards and uh, a couple three touchdowns. He was great. I mean, they never lost their focus, even with the Petrino thing affecting half of the spring. Uh, looked like their running game was okay. Uh, working through some issues on the offensive line, but it looks like they were going to be all right. I think they look like a, a bit better of a run-stopping team, even though they lost a lot of key defensive personnel. Um, I think, to their credit, uh, they didn't fall apart when the Petrino thing broke and just continued to march on. And, and, and I think within themselves, they found some leadership, and guys had to go outside their normal, their purview of, of being leaders uh, and, and showed <laughs> – you know, more leadership than Bobby Petrino did in this situation. What are some other significant things other than what you just mentioned about spring camp, whether it's players developing and, and uh, really emerging or um, position battles, things like that? What What are some other notable things from camp overall? Um, yeah, you know, Kobe Hamilton emerging as a guy who's probably going to be the top go-to receiver, taking that uh, Jarius Wright position. Uh, and I think they found a guy who's kind of like the next Joe Adams in, in Markwell Wade. Uh, heretofore, uh, infamous for his hit on Jonathan Krause at Vanderbilt and ejected from that game. But, uh, he's, he's a guy who catches the ball over the middle, makes a lot of moves. He's fast. Uh, if, if they can get him the ball in some space, he's going to be very Joe Adams like. Chris Gregg, the tight end, he was decent last year. Looks like he could be a, that could be their one, two, three receiver punch. Hamilton. Wade and, and Chris Gregg. Uh, like I said, still working through issues on the O-line. they got to get Alvin Bailey back together. He, he worked with the second unit most of, of spring, and I think he's battling some kind of eligibility thing. they got to make sure he gets in track. And, and then defensively, there's, there's just going to be some question marks going into next year. High Smith, the linebacker, missed the whole spring. They moved Tenarius Wright, the D-end the interior linebacker spot, so they, they're going to try to team right and high Smith. Uh, they think they have enough firepower at the end with Chris Smith and uh, Juco, Austin Flynn, and Trey Flowers. So, you know, their secondary play is going to be key, and I think they're going to be a strong special teams unit. Uh, if, they, if they're marginally better on defense, they'll have a chance to win a bunch of games next year. Tom, i got to ask you um... – Covering Arkansas versus covering Alabama. I mean, just what are some differences you see in the springs and just the programs in general? I, I'm always interested to hear from beat writers who've covered different schools. Uh, well, there's a, there's an intense section of fans here in Arkansas, but it's not to the level that it is in Alabama. Uh, and I think the folks in Arkansas keep their lives balanced a little bit more. They, there's a lot of outdoorsy stuff to do around here, and always the local politics and stuff, but there's just so many people in Alabama whose whole lives revolve, their, their, how they feel about themselves and their, their livelihood, their lives that revolve around the, the football programs at Bam and Auburn and the others. And here I think there's a little more balance. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a program here that has some tradition, but since they've been in the SEC, they had not done a whole lot until Petrino came along and even though they played in the SEC championship games a few times under Houston Nutt and, and Danny Ford, um, this is the strongest they've been in years. So uh, uh, the fans were all, all really excited, and now there's this transition period, and who knows what's, you know, what's it's going to yield in, in the wintertime. And i got to ask you about how far your drive is to work. Uh, a lot of people don't know this about you, Tom, but you used to drive, what, four hours between Mobile and Tuscaloosa about three or four times a week, didn't you, or two or three times a week? A couple times a week uh, for seven years, that three-and-a-half-hour one-way commute uh, really wears on you. Uh, that was a, uh, I did live in Tuscaloosa for two years, but, uh, you know, just all the coaching searches and the, kind of the volume of talk radio and the fan vitriol was kind of wears on you, and you could probably relate to that too, Mike. And here it's not quite as bad, and uh, my commute into campus is about five miles. My <laughs> wife graduated from the U of A here. And uh, we got a, a nice house. Our kids are pretty happy. That's great, man. Tom, when <laughs> when uh, Mike started talking about that, I thought he, what he was going to say was, since you brought up there's a lot of outdoorsy things to do there, that there's a lot of motorcycle riding oh, in, in Arkansas. Did you I thought have that's, to do that? I thought that's Tom. what you were going. I thought that's what you were going to do. This guy's heard every bad joke about Bobby Petrino, and you're going to put that on. <laughs> no, I I really thought that's where you were going. So, well, the one thing I was going to say is I'm out here in my garden, and uh, I'm about to put a bunch of grub and ant killer out. 
and I'm just hoping I don't get a call, hey, there's been a wreck. So that's all I'm going to say. It's the first calm day in a while. Uh, Ar- Tom Murphy from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette does a great job covering. You saw him a lot on ESPN with his perspective on uh, the Bob Petrino yep. situation as well. Tom, really appreciate the time. Have a great rest of the week. Okay, guys, have a good show.